It is great to have you here today. I'm finally going to get to the bottom of two things that really make everyone's golf game a lot tougher than it has to be. Number one is getting that divot in front of the golf ball. Now, when we do this, where a lot of players struggle is when you get your weight more to your left so that you can hit that golf ball first every time and take that divot in front of the golf ball. What happens naturally is as you get more weight left, you tend to open the shoulders up and get this club steeper and coming down a little bit more to the outside like that. So naturally, the more left I get, the more steep I'm gonna get with the club, the more over the top. I'm typically gonna have a little bit more of a fade bias. Let me explain the reason of this. You see, as I get my weight to the left, let's say I went all the way to the left. I got 100% of my weight on my left foot. Notice how that naturally closes my shoulders. It'd actually be impossible for me to get all of my weight on my left and keep my shoulders very closed. It's just really a stretch to make that happen. It's much more natural to let the shoulders open up as I get on my front foot, and that's gonna get my path, again, my club getting steep, and this path going across the golf ball. Obviously, I'm really exaggerating there. That's happening to a small degree every time we get our weight more to the left. Now, if I get my weight on the right, that's gonna allow me to have my shoulders more closed. So left, your shoulders naturally wanna open. Right, your shoulders naturally wanna close. Yeah, I can get that inside out path. I can get this club to shallow out from the inside but that's gonna bring my divot farther behind. So the real trick in golf is how do I get this club to shallow out from the inside, but then also do the opposite of what it naturally wants to do or what most people wanna do when they're doing this. How do I get it from the inside, but get the divot in front of the golf ball? And that's the real secret here. Now, you've probably seen a drill that looks something like this. I set up to a golf ball, I hold my club out, and then from here, I can throw under this club and that gets me shallowed out from the inside. Now, I love that drill, but there's a small variation that when you add it to this drill, it takes your low point from behind the golf ball to in front of the golf ball. Let's go ahead and give it a try here. I want you to grab a few golf balls with your right hand, grab a middle iron with your left hand. I'm gonna set up to this golf ball just like I would in a normal stance, ball in the middle of my stance, and then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and put this golf club in front of my left foot. So if it was in line with my left foot, it would be here, and it's a little bit outside of the golf ball. So basically it's gonna be here in line with my left foot and about four to five inches on this side of the golf ball. And that's gonna feel like a real stretch. Now what you're gonna notice when you do that is you're naturally gonna close your shoulders a little bit to be able to get more from the inside and to throw that golf ball. You're also gonna notice, which is a great thing, that your right shoulder will naturally start to work under or tucked, which is big for coming from the inside, getting that inside out tight path. So again, I'm gonna throw golf balls to the right as though they're going to the right of my target and I can do about five or six of those. Now, another key here when I'm doing this, I don't wanna have my hips really closed also. It's really easy to cheat, get your hips closed and throw it over there. Well, that's great for this drill, but it doesn't translate to a golf swing. I want my hips to go ahead and open up, let those rotate toward the target as I'm going under this club. And if I can do that, you'll notice my right heel starts to come off the ground. Now I'm gonna do about five or six of those. And again, the problem is my divot's gonna be a little bit behind. So yes, you will get that path out to the right, but you might hit some chunk shots kind of like this. So that was a good swing, theoretically a good swing. My path was nine degrees out to the right, which is a bit of an over exaggeration for this drill. But I hit about five or six inches behind the golf ball, which is obviously when I get out to turf, that's gonna be a huge problem. Here's the small tweak you need to make to get this drill to work. I wanna take that same thing, same setup, club line with my left foot outside the ball. Now I'm really closed with my shoulders. I'm letting my weight open and my hips open. I'm getting from the inside, but I wanna do a slight variation. Take your right foot and pull it back where it's almost in line with your left foot. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm forcing myself to get almost all my weight on my left foot and then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same drill again. So what's happening here is I'm getting used to throwing this golf ball to the inside while getting my weight to the left, which when I add a club to that, is gonna pull my divot in front of the golf ball. So I'm just gonna go ahead, pull this foot back, do the same drill, and now all of a sudden I can rotate my hips open, get that chucking it through there. I'm gonna have that inside out path, that shallow out swing, but it pulled my divot in front of the golf ball. So when I repeat that same feeling, so I'm gonna do five or six of those just like that. 
Then I'm going to sit back up to the golf ball. I'm going to feel the same feelings that I had in my left leg at impact. And you're going to see that that's going to straighten this ball flight out. And it's also going to help me to get that divot in front. There we go, and I hit that one about as good as I can hit a golf shot. Seven iron, 188, how many have to do this drill every day? But that's gonna really help you to finally get those two pieces together. Now, one thing that I didn't touch on here is how you gotta smooth out that transition to be able to do this. You see, this is all great to be able to say, okay, I'm gonna throw this golf ball through here at impact, but what if I rush my transition? And naturally what's gonna happen if I rush it is my club is gonna steepen up and I'm gonna get this vertical shaft that again, it's just not gonna be very consistent. It's gotta get shallowed out from the inside as that's happening. Well, see, if you're quick and you rush it from the top, there's a really easy solution for this once you learn the right way to do it. And if you pair that with what we just did here today, you're gonna to have that beautiful smooth transition. You're gonna deliver it shallow from the inside and get that divot in front. Not much more you could ask for in a golf swing. I'm gonna play a preview of the video that's gonna to help to smooth out that transition all you need to do to see the full thing is go ahead and click one of the cards. It pops up somewhere in your screen. If you don't see one of the cards, don't worry. Go ahead and click the link down below in the description. And you'll get instant access to it there. Let's go ahead and get started. I can't wait to smooth out your transition and add it to what we just did. Bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's going to happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling. And that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being outdriven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now, your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now, I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move. And that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 